in Unit 2, we will familiarize ourselves with the research question and the research hypothesis. This unit is divided into eight sections. Section 1. Differentiation of questions. There are different ways of posing a question. Firstly, the questions can be differentiated according to the type of the expected answer. Closed-ended questions are questions that permit a limited choice of responses. Closed-ended questions with two possible answers are called dichotomous questions or yes-no questions. The answer to these closed-ended questions is either a simple yes or no or a choice between two possibilities such as true or false, male or female, etc. A closed-ended question is, for example, have you read the book? This question is answered by either yes or no. In comparison, open-ended questions are questions that require an individually formulated answer. An open-ended question is, for example, what is the book about? Furthermore, questions can differ in the syntax of the interrogative sentence. Direct questions are posed in a main clause that ends with a question mark. For example, both have you read the book and what is the book about are direct questions. Indirect questions are posed in a subordinate clause that ends with a period. Examples of an indirect question are He asked her if she has read the book or he wanted to know what the book is about. In a research paper, the research question is always posed as an open-ended, indirect question. Example. The aim of this research paper is to analyze how the German Renewable Energy Act influences and so forth. Section 2. Types of questions. Different interrogative words are used in order to formulate research questions. More precisely, interrogative pronouns and interrogative adverbs can be distinguished from each other. Personal interrogative pronouns are who and whom. Impersonal interrogative pronouns are what and which. Interrogative adverbs are where in the case of a question that is related to a location, whence in the case of a question that is related to a source, whither in the case of a question that is related to a goal, when in the case of a question that is related to time, how in the case of a question that is related to a manner, why and wherefore in the case of a question that is related to a reason, whether or in the case of a question that is related to a choice. The interrogative words in bold, namely who, what, where, when, how and why, are sometimes referred to as the five W's and one H, or in some cases as the six W's. Section 3. Types of Hypotheses In the following, it will be pointed out how hypotheses can be differentiated. The term hypothesis stems from the Greek and means to suppose. Hypotheses can be divided into the following general types. Thesis or ad hoc hypotheses, working hypotheses, scientific hypotheses. Scientific hypotheses can be defined as nomological hypotheses, quasi-nomological hypotheses and statistical hypotheses. Furthermore, there is a different way to look at the problem. This way, hypotheses can be differentiated by their inner logic. Regarding the inner logic, it can be distinguished between cause-effect hypotheses, distribution hypotheses, correlation hypotheses and difference hypotheses. Section 4. Differentiation according to the depth of hypotheses. The three general types of hypotheses differ in the depth of the hypothesis. 
thesis or ad hoc hypotheses are first thoughts that remain to be developed and substantiated. Working hypotheses consist of a first draft of an assumed cause-effect relationship that has to be further reflected. Scientific hypotheses contain a fully formulated, substantiated, reflected and specified or assumed cause-effect relationship if then that can be empirically tested. The differences in the depth of a hypothesis can be demonstrated by the following examples. A thesis or ad hoc hypothesis would be subsidy schemes have a positive impact on financings of windmill farms. A working hypothesis would be if a windmill project financing is financed under the German Renewable Energy Act, then it has a positive impact on the financial feasibility. A scientific hypothesis would be if a windmill farm project financing is realized under the German Renewable Energy Act, EEG, then the market risk will be reduced by a guaranteed compensation for electricity fed into the grid and thereby the financial feasibility will be increased. Section 5. Differentiation according to inner logic of hypotheses. The following examples describe the differentiation of hypotheses according to their inner logic. A cause-effect hypothesis would be bank employees with university degrees tend to have a higher income. A distribution hypothesis would be shoe sizes of human beings follow a bell-shaped Gaussian distribution. A correlation hypothesis would be the inflation rate is negatively correlated with the unemployment rate. A difference hypothesis would be there are more male students than female students who study engineering sciences. Section 6. Scientific Hypotheses Different forms of scientific hypotheses are applied in different fields. A scientific hypothesis can have the form of a nomological hypothesis. The term nomological stems from the Greek nomos for law. A nomological hypothesis can be defined as an empirically proved cause-effect relationship or mechanism without a space-time restriction and without a probabilistic character. That is, it is always valid and true. It is characterized by time stability. Nomological hypotheses are typical for natural sciences. A scientific hypothesis can have the form of a quasi-nomological hypothesis. The term quasi is the Latin word meaning almost or as it were. A quasi-nomological hypothesis can be defined as an empirically proved cause-effect relationship or mechanism with a space-time restriction and without a probabilistic character, that is, it is only temporarily and or for specified situations valid and true. It is characterized by limited time stability. Quasi-nomological hypotheses are typical for business and social sciences. A scientific hypothesis can be a statistical hypothesis. A statistical hypothesis is defined as an empirically identified assumed cause-effect relationship or mechanism with a space-time restriction and with a probabilistic character. Statistical hypotheses are typical for natural sciences as well as business and social sciences. The different forms of scientific hypotheses can be demonstrated by the following examples. A nomological hypothesis without a space-time restriction and without a probabilistic character would be if the temperature is below or equal zero degrees Celsius, then pure water is or will be frozen. A quasi-nomological hypothesis with a space-time restriction and without a probabilistic character would be if a company uses the German legal form of a limited liability company, 
GmbH or GmbH, then the liability of the shareholders is or will be restricted to their signed equity participations. A statistical hypothesis with a space-time restriction and with a probabilistic character would be if a customer has ordered from our home shopping TV channel and he or she lives in postal code area 60323, then he or she pays or will pay the invoice with a probability of 95% within 10 days after delivery. Section 7. Interdependence of Research Question and Hypothesis the interdependence of the research question and the hypothesis is shown on the basis of our example. First, the research question posed as a direct question is as follows. How will the German Renewable Energy Act, EEG, influence the market risk and thereby the financial feasibility of windmill farm project financings? In the research paper, the research question is posed as an open-ended indirect question. The aim of this research paper is to analyze how the German Renewable Energy Act influences the market risk and thereby the financial feasibility of windmill farm project financings. Finally, the research hypothesis states a relationship. If a windmill farm project financing is realized under the German Renewable Energy Act, EEG, then the market risk will be reduced and thereby the financial feasibility will be increased. Why is a thesis called a thesis? In your research paper, you will raise a research question. At the end of your research paper, you have to provide a conclusion, or in other words, a potential answer for a given research question. It is a possible explanation for a problem, and not a final or definite solution to a problem at hand. In other words, your conclusion is only a hypothesis that can be supported or falsified by further research work. Hence, a research paper is called a thesis.